right? Mm -hmm. And then that fits in nicely with our English understanding of the word forgive. And so the two just make a, a, an easy transition where we just jump to it, right? And then yeah. we don't even think about what it's meaning in, in terms of the Bible. It would help all of us if we stopped and asked ourselves that when we're reading the Bible sometimes, right? Yeah. Ask Our, ourselves what, Greg, specifically? Ask ourselves, what is the Bible trying to say that this word means? Not what do I think that word means based on my 47 years of life now, and now I'm going to take my idea of what these words mean, and now I'm going to put them into the Bible. It would help us if sometimes we thought, what does the Bible... People get upset with me because I, I use the, 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 the language in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I do that on purpose. You should. Even, you though know. it, even though it can be monotonous sometimes, like, oh, it doesn't flow as nice sometimes. It's not like great examples. But it, it helps people start making a connection to what the verses are trying to say, what the Bible's trying to say. Right? right? Like we read that, that whole chapter one day that John Fazio wrote out. And he inserted the word death for sin. Right. And it made it so clear, yeah. right, what it was actually talking about. Wow. But if we stop and think about it, the Bible makes it just that clear. It says the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then what would be the sending away of sin then be? The sending away of death. Yeah. The sending away of death. Right. So if we had death because of sin, then what would be the sending away of sin? The sending away of death. It's real simple. What's so powerful about that is death is actually what ails all of us. Yes. Death is actually the problem. Mm -hmm. Death is the father of everything that torments our hearts, everything that fills us with fear. It's the father of all the fruit in our life that we don't like or that we think isn't the fruit of God's life. Death is the father of it. Right? right? That's to me, for me the hard one. That it just, oh man, my mind kind of... Yeah, but you think about that. Think about how we have been so focused on behavior and associated behavior with sin. Erroneously associated behavior with sin. And now when you go, to me, substituting death in there for, for that kind of just pushes behavior yes. off the table. Right? And now, you know, death is here and behavior, <laughs> problems with behavior are way down here. So the, the carnal definition of sin associated with behavior becomes mute at this point. It does. It, there's no meaning to it. Comparison to death. It's well, hold, hold, hold on, hold on, real quick. Were you, were you saying you don't understand how death is the father? I, I'm oh. saying that that is something I have to. I have to that, think but that's what you were death saying. You have is, to wrap your yes. Your brain around. Death is the father of this. Death okay. Is the so, so, of... so then I want to explain that okay. just so everybody knows. Sure. Even though I've said it a million times, Please. Paul called it the fruit of death yeah. in Sin Romans seven. Is the fruit of death. The works of the flesh is the fruit of death, right? And so how is death the father of that? Paul also said the sting of death is sin, sin right? Right? Mm -hmm. So death stings the heart and it produces sin, mm -hmm. okay? So what would that look like? Death stings my heart. I see that I don't have life, but I have death. Yeah. What's that going to fill my heart with? Fear. Right. Fear. Fear. So death produces fear in the heart. Fear is the father of every fruit that we could see manifest in our life that isn't born from above. Yeah. Fear is the father of it. Death is the father of fear. So what does fear do? Hebrews 2 says we were all our days in bondage through the fear of death. So fear fills our hearts. We don't like it when we think we don't have something we need for life. We hate it. Yeah. Freaks us out. Yeah. Okay. So then that what takes us captive to laboring and toiling to try to get life ourselves mm -hmm. or try to get what we think we need for peace, okay? That's engaging this flesh to try to gain life. Paul went on to say in Romans 7 that this flesh doesn't possess the ability to bring forth life. So in the day I engage this flesh that doesn't inherently possess life in it to try to bring forth life, I'm not going to be able to bring forth life I'm going to bring forth something else, which is what God told Adam. You're going to labor and toil by the sweat of your brow all the days of your life, and you're only going to bring forth thorns and thistles. Right. 
Thorns and thistles is talking about the works of the flesh that Paul described. Envy, backbiting, gossip, murder, hatred, all the fruit of death, right? Mm -hmm. So death fills our hearts with fear. Fear causes us to enlist our own strength or our own members to try to get life. Yeah. There isn't life in our members. So the more we enlist them to try to get life, the more the fruit of death comes out of us or all the works of the flesh. Does everybody see that dynamic? How it plays out? Mm -hmm. Does everybody see that? So we have sin, or what the Bible calls iniquity. That is a wisdom that says, by my own ability, I am going to be exalted by everything I can gather unto myself. Right? right. That's what Lucifer said. Right? Yep. I'm going to, he saw this great ability he had. He said, I'm going to use this great ability I have to gather unto myself as much as I can. And then I'll be exalted by what I can gather unto myself. I'll be exalted by the life I can gather unto myself. That's iniquity yeah. or sin, which is a noun. Right. That's a wisdom. Now, the wages of adopting that wisdom is death or to not partake or be a partaker in the life of God. Right. In the day you become aware that you're not partaking of life, guess what you're not going to be able to do? Sit there and not care. <laughs> so in the day you become acutely aware that you're in death or death is reigning over you or you lack something you need for life you're going to enlist your own members to gain life yes. that produces what Paul called the fruit of death or the works of the flesh yes. that's why he called it the works of the flesh and not sin because he's weighing all these different facets of what sin looks like Right? So he knows iniquity or sin is a wisdom. Mm -hmm. He knows it causes us not to partake of life. And he sees the fruit of that is the works of the flesh or the fruit of death. Right? Yeah. So if somebody's full of hatred, do you see how death and fear is the father yeah. of that? Why would you hate somebody? Because you think they're in the way of you having what you need for life. Mm -hmm. Why did Satan hate man? Says he was a murderer from the beginning. Why did he hate man? He saw man like above him. He saw man above him. He saw man had what he should have had. So he hated them. That was the fruit of death. Yes. Death as in I lack something I need to have for life. Do you see how that brought forth murder in him? Yeah. So do you see Satan lack? Death took him captive and he murdered man. Yeah. Right? Does everybody see that? Does everybody understand that dynamic? So that's, death is the father of everything that ails our lives. If we're afraid of something, we're scared, we're worried, we're carrying burdens, death is the father of that, right? Those things cause the works of the flesh to come out of us mm -hmm. because we engage the flesh to try to bring ourselves peace, yeah. right? Like for me, um, death was stinging my heart when I was a kid because... <clears throat> As a young kid, I could run like crazy, and I was winning all these awards and everything, and people started paying attention to me. Colleges, I started scholarship offers. Holy Cross was giving me a scholarship. Well, when they started paying attention to me, I thought the reason I was special and valuable was because I could run. And so I became deceived into thinking that life was found in my ability to run. Mm -hmm. Now, I got hurt, and I couldn't run anymore. And so all of a sudden, I lacked what I needed for life. That filled me with fear and tormented me like nobody's business. And I was just a young kid. And I, I, I dealt with it as best as I could for a couple of years. But ultimately, the way I tried to soothe myself from that pain that I felt was to get hot. Well, why was I getting hot? To soothe the pain. Right? And so the flesh's answer to deal with the pain is to get hot. To drink. Do you see how the works of the flesh came forth from fear and torment? Right. Do you see how that works? Yeah. Does everybody understand that dynamic? Yeah. Well, it's important. Just, just like eternal life is not just that you're going to live forever. Eternal life, there's a, a quality that is found in that life that produces good. It produces, um, you know, life and peace and joy. All the fruit of the spirit. Abundance. So abundance. You have an abundance. So the abundance is what you see coming out of the person. Mm -hmm. But if you if you are in fear of death because you do not have eternal life, 
or you don't know what eternal life really means, you're going to produce the fruit of death. Yeah. You're going to be shriving for life. Right. Yeah. The fruit that comes forth in you will be born from lack. Yes. I lack what is needed. Right? right? Mm -hmm. If I pop off on somebody and yell and scream at them, why would I do that to somebody? Unless I think they've done something to me that can keep me from some good thing I need for life. Otherwise, why would I care what they did? Why am I so moved by what they did? And why do I feel like I need to say something about what they did? Why? Do, that's the whole thing I preached about offense. Mm -hmm. If you want to be offended by something, I mean, and this isn't to use the accurate definition of the, the term in the Bible. If you want to be upset with somebody, if you want to blame somebody for the hurt you feel, blame death. Because yeah. no, right. at least if you blame death, you'll realize the only solution to death is found in God. Right. And you won't try to, there ain't nobody in here thinking they can keep themselves from the grave. So if you see that death is what causes your problem, it, it almost subconsciously will cause you to rest in God because no one's confused about whether or not they can save themselves from death. Is anyone confused about that? Okay, so then, we only know of one guy who conquered the grave. And we know he conquered the grave by the power of God. Yes. So if death is my problem, there's only one solution. It's God and what he did to raise Jesus from the dead. So in the day I feel lack, or I feel pain, or I feel hurt, I know God's the only one that can satisfy that. That's right. Right? Yes. Yep. Does everybody see how that works? Mm -hmm. That will keep me from hating people. Mm -hmm. Right? We'll just use Lucifer as an example. If Lucifer would have thought, well, no, it's not, it's not man that's, that's the problem. It's something crooked in my heart. Yes. And then he would have talked to God. Yeah. He might not have hated man. And I'm just using speculation. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Just as, a, as an example. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Cain and Abel. Cain hated Abel. He killed Abel. Why? Because he perceived that Abel had something that he didn't have. And not only did Abel have something he didn't have, Abel had something he needed for life to be exalted. Right. And so then he got busy being filled with fear and taken captive. And the way he tried to get what he thought was his or what he needed to have life resulted in him killing Abel. Right. But what did God say to Cain? What are you upset about, bro? If you offer the same as Abel, will your offering not also be acceptable? Look, there's a lamb crouching outside the door. Go and grab the lamb. Master it. Offer it. Come with blood, just like Abel. Won't you also be exalted, just like Abel? No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> That's right. Do you, do you see? Yeah. Do you, do, do you see the dynamic with... The word sin, mm -hmm. the different facets of it. Iniqu sin, iniquity, is a wisdom. Yeah. It said, I'm going to find life by my ability to do what is good and not do what is evil. I'm going to find life by my ability to bring forth what is good and keep what is evil from coming forth. I'm going to find life by that. It's a wisdom. It's a logic. It's a way of thinking. Yes. That way of thinking will cause you to not partake in life or it will cause you to sin, miss the mark. God's mark for your life is that you live and not die. Right. So there is sin iniquity, which is a wisdom that brings forth sin, you missing the mark of eternal life, right. which will bring forth sin, the fruit of death or the works of the flesh. Yeah. Does everybody see mm -hmm. how that builds? Mm -hmm. Wisdom to death to the fruit of death, mm -hmm. right? So when we say hatred, that isn't really sin. That's a sinful action. It means it's the fruit born from sin. Right. Do, do you see? Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Does to me. I don't know. I'm not it's what comes body, forth but... in a person should they engage dying flesh to try to get life. That's why it's called the works of the flesh. So should this flesh try to attain to life itself, it's going to produce a certain kind of thing. You know the kind of thing it's going to produce? It's the same kind of thing we saw in Cain. Hatred, envy, gossiping, backbiting, all that kind of stuff. Galatians 5. Galatians 5. Whatever is written there. Right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So does everybody see how death is the father of the works of the flesh? Does that make sense, Shannon? How, how that works? Right? So you, you look at Adam. 
It says he was, a, God said, why, where are you, Adam? Why are you hiding? I was afraid. So what happened to Adam? Adam was naked and unashamed. Right? right? right. He wasn't aware right. that he wasn't clothed in life. Then he ate from the tree. That said, I'll be clothed by life by, by, by my own works. Then he realized he wasn't clothed in life. Right? right? That filled his heart with lack and fear. What was the next thing Adam tried to do after his heart was filled with fear? He tried to clothe himself. See how the fear took him captive? To trying to clothe himself with what? Life. What happened when he tried to clothe himself with life? Was he clothed? No. He was still naked, wasn't he? And now he's still filled with fear. And so then God comes and talks to him. But that's when God tells Adam, as a result of you eating from this tree, this is what this tree is going to do to you. You're going to try to find life by the sweat of your brow means you're going to labor and toil to try to bring forth life yourself, just like you were doing when you were trying to clothe yourself. And in all your labors and toiling to bring forth life, you're never going to bring forth the fruit of life. You're going to bring forth thorns and thistles. You're never going to bring forth a nice watermelon or tomato <laughs> or, you know, whatever, grapes. You're never going to bring forth that. You're going to only bring forth thorns and thistles, right? Right. Can you take a step back and watch 